What's up, Mega Maniacs? This is Mr. Mega Man Fan, and this is my first ever episode of Genesis Does, which you may guess refers to their famous commercial from the 1990s where they took pot shots at Nintendo. Now, personally, I like both systems. I've got them both hooked up to this TV, but today I'm going to show you something that Genesis does that Nintendo don't. Virtua Racing. This game is exclusive to Sega Genesis, and like so many of the famous Super Nintendo titles, this is a chip-enhanced game. It has the Sega SVP microchip, which creates spectacular 3D polygon graphics and incredible speed. It's also four-player. It's three exciting courses, two-player split-screen, and it is in this lovely box that I picked up from Pop Culture. Let's pop it open, and you can see this cartridge is massive. It is way bigger than a normal Sega Genesis cartridge. And I will give Super Nintendo credit for this. When they put the Super FX chip in things like Star Fox, the cartridge wasn't way bigger than a normal Super Nintendo cartridge. This one was a little dirty and it didn't work on the first try. So Q-tips and rubbing alcohol were required. And that's how you do it. You just rub the wet side gently along the contacts and dry with the other side and then it looks like that if your cart's full of gunk but once you're done the game will work beautifully now these graphics may not seem too mind-blowing to you the viewer in 2019 but trust me in the 1990s in the pre-playstation era 3d polygonal graphics like this were truly something spectacular this was not the norm for video games on consoles at the time and even PC gaming it wasn't exactly standard you had some 3D games that were simulated 3D like Doom and Wolfenstein 3D but true 3D rendering was still only just starting to become an emergent technology it wasn't fully developed and fleshed out to the degree that it is now in the present day I like the irony of the VR flashing over and over again as though it's virtual reality, virtual racing. Although this certainly wouldn't look all that hot if it was on a PSVR helmet, but it looks pretty good on a cathode ray tube television. And since I'm playing this for the very first time here on the channel, I'll go with the beginner course. Now it gives you a pit start where your crew gets the tires ready and then you're off to the races. Or not, since I didn't know I needed to use the B button. But once I figured that out, it was semi-smooth sailing. This is a timed track where you get time extensions if you clear certain goalposts, like the one that I'm about to cross. CP for checkpoint. And there's a nice bridge here. There are other cars on the track. And in the upper left-hand corner, it tells you your position among the field. And since I don't know how to drive this course well yet, I'm not very high up in the field. I'm running 13th right now, and I keep going into the grass or into the shoulder, so I'm not able to gain any position. And then when I was about to, I spun out completely, so not a fabulous performance by me there. But I did get the extended time, so I can give it a better try on my next roll around this circuit. I like that little leaf effect that it's blowing in and letting you know where you are on the course. I'm not doing too hot. I am using a very nice quality six button controller that doesn't have much wear and tear, but I obviously need to get the hang of like braking and drifting around corners and just generally being able to maximize the amount of time it takes me and get the lowest amount possible. Maximize sounds like more, but in this case, maximize would be less. I need to complete these laps faster and faster to gain time on my opponents. But since I can't this try, I'll end here.